Let me get the dock up. Here we go. Good morning. Welcome to Ask the Maester Live, live from the Ringer Studios here in Los Angeles. I'm your host, Jason. Today we're going to be answering questions from uh, pertaining to the last episode of Game of Thrones, Beyond the Wall. Dragon Death, shouts to Viserion, rest in power. Um, as always, watch The Ringer for all your Game of Thrones slash everything coverage. The revamped Ringer, it's great, it's the best. Um, I had to ask the Maester column drop today. Alison Herman had her recap and review come out yesterday. We've got stuff coming all week. There's The Watch with Andy and Chris talking about Game of Thrones. Binge Mode comes out Wednesday. Um, you know, just like a lot of stuff. Let's get to your questions. It'll be great. Um, first question, Richard, is the Knight's King on the show really the Knight's King from the books? I, sh I thought the show Knight King would predate the wall. Um, it's prob no, it's uh, probably a different guy. I think George has said stuff to that effect that it's a different, different Night King. That said, um, I think it's probable that the, the show based a bunch of the Night King lore, which, to be fair, we don't know about, um, on the book version of the Night King. So yeah, like they're not. Um, Specifically, the same person, but I, I'm betting that the show is based on, based on the book version. Paul Fraser, does Valerian steel swords slash dragon glass have the same effect on whites as it does white walkers? This is interesting because um, it seems so now. That was not specifically stated in the past, um, not specifically stated in the books either. It's also kind of weird because like a lot of whites are just skeletons, you know. Like so, like you stab them with dragon glass. How does that work? How does that kill him? But clearly, um, when the zombie polar bear was mauling various people, once uh, Jorah stabbed it with dragon glass, it died. Shouts to Jorah, Mallory's husband, for being the only guy to be like, oh, yeah, we took a cartload of dragon glass. Maybe we should use it. Um, Bianca, what happens to white south of the wall? Would the difference in temperature slow them down? Interesting question. Um, no, they, I mean, they can, they can move around. If you remember season one, there were the whites that um, attacked Lord Commander Mormont. So clearly they can, they can be active um, south of the wall. Of course, the north is, the north is cold. Um, I, there's a question about whether whites and white walkers bring cold, whether the cold brings them. I would imagine wherever they are, it's just cold. Where, wherever the white walkers and whites are, um, the temperature will drop, especially the white walkers. Uh, Chris, does the wall's magical projections extend upward into infinity like NFL goalposts? Good. I like this. Or does the Night King's dragon allow him to avoid it altogether by flying over? It's a super interesting question. Um, because we know that the wall is protected by magical wards. I'm trying to look at the camera more because I've been watching these. And I realize I don't look at the camera because I have nerd personality. Which is like what happens when you grow up. Like very introverted, you don't look, pe look at the camera or in people's eyes. So I'm trying to connect with you now, Chris. Uh, I think that I think that it's we can presume that the magical wars extend up a distance, but but when Danny flew back over with uh, you know the heroes and the white in a box, white in a bag, uh, he didn't fly apart. Like he he's remained intact, the white. We presume, because obviously there's going to be a next episode where they go to south to King's Landing and bring it. So clearly the wards did not destroy the white in a bag. Therefore, if the Night King flies up high enough, we presume that he could get over. That's bad news. Angie. With all of her training, how could Arya let Littlefinger lead her exactly where he wanted to and watch her doing what he wanted? Can she really be that oblivious? Listen, um, the Winterfell plot is tough. It's tough. There's just a lot of stuff that, especially last episode, was talking about this with Mal last night. It's, it's, hard. it's almost like they filmed it like, like a dream sequence, a lot of those... Um, that section, like Littlefinger talking to Sansa, is the way they shoot it is very, very strange. Um, 
it's just everything there is very weird. Yeah, I mean, that's not consistent. I think one of the failings, the show is still very, very good when it doesn't feel the need to manufacture drama and it's not directly engaging with the magical elements of the show. I think where they really miss the guidance of George and um, the blueprint that's been laid out is stuff like Faceless Men and you know, the Night King and why those magical elements happen the way they do. You know, like world building in fantasy and sci-fi is it's really important and it's meticulous and there are rules that need to be followed and established. You can't just do things. So, yeah, I mean, Arya should know that Littlefinger, she's had experience. First of all, she's she was in the room in Harrenhal when Littlefinger was talking to Tywin Lannister about killing Robb Stark. So she knows he's a bad guy. Um, why is it that Arya can't tell that Sansa is telling the truth when she's talking about uh, being forced to, to write the letter at first? And then all of a sudden she turns it on and is like, oh, no, you want to, you actually want to rule and stuff. I, you know, the game, and she starts playing the game of faces. It's just like inconsistent stuff and it's kind of maddening. Kimon. Kimon? I'm sorry if I mispronounced that. What fraction of Night King's army was destroyed? Will the ice dragon breathe fire to bring down the wall or ice? Um, in the lore of the, of the books, I answer this question in my Ask the Maester column that went up today on the revampedringer.com. Shouts to Wasserman the Media Group. Um, in the lore, ice dragons breathe freezing cold air. Those are natural ice, or natural. Those are like ice dragons that weren't dead dragons that, that were then raised as whites. So can the undead Viserion breathe fire, ice? We don't know. We're going to find out, though. Uh, what fraction of the Night King's army was charged? Probably not that much. I mean, uh, Mance Raider had 100,000 wildlings in his horde or army or whatever, but that includes women and children. So you would presume 8,000, six to 8,000 years of corpses beyond the wall is what theoretically the Night King can call on. He might have an army that's like millions strong. Who knows? J.L. Alberto, who among the major characters will die in the season finale? Top three candidates. Ooh, I think, I wouldn't be surprised if Cersei dies. I wouldn't be surprised if Littlefinger dies. I, like, some of the stuff that goes on at Winterfell makes me think that he might have died. He better not die off camera, that's all I'm going to say. And then I think we're going to get Clegane Bowl. Uh, in the season finale. Patrick, do the Targaryens have similar warg-like tendencies with their dragons as the Stark have with their dire, worlds, dire wolves, or is this some other connection entirely? This is kind of like a retcon for the show, which I like, actually, that Danny um, and Targaryens have like a mental connection with their dragons. Um, not, not the case, really, in the books. Um, do I think it's like warging? I don't, because it's dragon-specific. Um, but it certainly is a some kind of mental connection. But it's more of a relationship. You know, like, wargs can control an animal. Um, Danny can ask Drogon to do things. He won't necessarily do them. Richard, does Danny understand what happened to John now after seeing his scars? Yeah, I think so. Here's a here's a here's a thing. The King of the North like it was frozen, is freezing, right? That's why he laid it in the bed and they put the furs on him. Uh, Danny needs to either like, let's just get this on, like jump in the bed, warm this guy up, or if you're not gonna do that, like pull the blanket up to, like why is his, I know you gotta see the abs and all that, it's HBO, pull the blanket up to his neck. The guy's like freezing, it's not healthy. Sean Yu, where is this guy, Sean Yu? It's just like, Unbelievable, this kid left us. Knowing the events of the show, how many of these big plot points will happen within the book? Squad going up north, Danny flying north with three dragons, etc. I think Danny will have to fly north with dragons. That just has to happen in the books, assuming the books get written. Please write them. George R. R. Martin. Squad going up north. I don't I, don't, I doubt that happens. I just don't see that happening. Not in that context. Um, uh, but, but I do think a dragon dies, certainly. Seth, what do you think Cersei is planning? I don't know. 
I don't know. She's planning, so I don't, like, another wildfire thing? That would be so lame. I hope that's not it. Um, Franklin, can faceless men impersonate the living? Could it have been Arya in Sansa's face that sent Brienne away? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about in the Winterfell. Um, the Winterfell plot is strange. Like, uh, Sansa is acting really robotic and cold in that scene with um, Brienne. Uh, so, Arya, I mean, Littlefinger in the scene with, with Sansa is acting weird. Can faceless men impersonate the living? No. Not that we know of. It, if they can in the show, that's a change because you have to cut off a face. And I guess you could theoretically keep a person alive when you're cutting off their face. But it's not ideal. Um, so that would be a change. If, if that is a thing in the show where Arya can take the face of a living person, that's a change and not really a change I support. Ronnie, many people talk about the eyes on Longclaw open when John comes up from the water. I've seen the episode a few times now. It seems that there is water coming on the handle of the sword. So that's why the eye seems open. What do you think? Yeah, I think that that's, um, yeah. I think it's either water or the, can like, the reflection of the camera on the surface of Longclaw. I don't think it's intentional. I think it's like a weird artifact. I mean, when, you, when he comes up out of the water, a whole bunch of water splashes up, and that's when the eye changes. Um, so I just think it's, it's either one of those two things. Chris, will Jamie abandon Cersei and go north with Brienne? Hmm. I don't think he'll go north, but I do think there's a split coming with, with Jamie and Cersei. Or like, I guess I hope that more than I think that, but I do hope it. Alex, when did whites get so smart? When did they become aware of their safety? Are you talking about like the gimp white when he's like surrounded by John and the guys and he's like, Aah! I mean, I guess, yeah, I mean, that was weird, whatever. Ben, how do you feel about Cersei's character changing from the books and the book she's portrayed as wildly incompetent? And I thought that was her defining trait. Now all of a sudden she's Tywin reincarnated. She's not Tywin reincarnated. All this stuff is like short-term moves propped up by, you know, the necessary, I guess, in theory, the, the necessities of drama and creating drama and plot. Like, all the stuff she's done is not that great. The deal with Euron is blown up, considering that she's now pregnant with Jamie's child, and she's openly proclaiming, proclaiming it as Jamie's child. So there goes her marriage to Euron deal. That's, like, already a huge mistake that she made. Um, yeah, I mean, she's a... Sh Wildly incompetent is strong. I think she's ruthless and doesn't think beyond um, just killing the thing that's right in front of her. Um, but that's worked for her. You know, she, she, make, she makes big bets and they've been paying off lately, but it can't last. Um, Joseph, will we ever see Ghost again? Yes. James, what role do you see Bran playing in the episodes to come? I don't know. It would have been great to see him, like, when John went north beyond the wall, like it would have been great if someone who can see through the eyes of ravens could have piloted ravens like above the battle and seen what's going on and then use the ravens to send messages rather than have Gendry like run 40 miles or whatever it is, like in a night. Uh, are we sure Sansa is actually telling the truth? How do we know she doesn't truly want to be the Lady of Winterfell forever? I'm sure that some part of her wants to be, wants to be in control, be the Lady of Winterfell, wants to um, have agency in her life so that she can protect herself in the way that um, she wants to. Um, that said, you can want that and not be like, oh, I'm going to X out Jon Snow. You know what I mean? Like... That's just, that's life. You know, people in life want things that would put them over the top, but that doesn't mean you're willing in every case to, like, stab your family members and or friends in the back to get it. Um, <clears throat> I, don't, I don't see that as necessarily a problem. Darrell, do you think we will see Euron with the dragon horn? I don't think that just because there's not enough time. Um... I will take, let's take two more. Patrick, do you think Bran sent Benjamin to John like the last Three-Eyed Raven and did for him and Mira? It's possible, sure, why not? Also, um, he could have just, yeah, I mean, it's, it is possible, sure. 
Why not? That would be a cool wrinkle. It'd be cool. They could have put that in the show, and that would have been an awesome wrinkle to like. And then you have Bran in the show. Um, here's a thing that's weird. So, the the Hound sees the mountain like an arrowhead in the flames. The mountain like an arrowhead is in Bran's visions from season six, home and another and and the door when you know he sees the creation of the of the Night's King, um, and he sees the children in the forest like in that area when it was like autumn slash spring. So it was weird to me that the, the army of the dead was just like walking around there. First of all, it's really close to Eastwatch and no one knew they were there. And it's weird that they were just there and not like going for something. Like I thought for sure they'd be looking for the last children of the forest, something like that. They'd be looking for something. Um, so it's weird that they're just like, I guess they're just walking around up there? Sure. Brian, where do you think the big meeting with all the major players will be next week? And do you think they will make this one sensible? It's not, the whole construct is not sensible. Meeting Cersei Lannister in King's Landing to convince her to do something makes zero sense. Just burn the freaking red keep to the ground. And that's it. You're done. Uh, the big meeting will take place in the Dragon Pit because we saw it in the next episode scenes. And we know it's the Dragon Pit because that's just the information that's like out there. All right. Thanks, guys. Stay tuned to The Ringer for all your Game of Thrones sports and pop culture news. It looks beautiful on our Vox platform. Uh, watch Talk the Thrones Sunday night after the East Coast airing of Game of Thrones. Live on Twitter, um, LA people come see our live show at Largo tomorrow night. I think that, I don't know, try to come to that. Can people come to that? I don't know. I think it's sold out. Don't listen to me. Binge Mode comes out tomorrow sometime, whenever. And, you know, we're going to have lots of stuff. Group posts going, pre, pre-show pre group posts coming up later this week. Um, the Watch, Chris and Andy talking about lots of stuff, including Game of Thrones. It's been great, guys. Peace.